I wanted to share with you a new tool that I that I, I bought off eBay here recently. This came in last week, and I've been searching for some planer gauges, and this was one that I had my eye on, and there, there was another one, a Lufkin in a case that I missed out on. Somebody somebody beat me to it, but anyway, I was I was watching this, and they had a this one was uh, for sale for buy it now, free shipping for forty one dollars. So I like the looks of it. It was nice and wide. I've never seen one big like this before. So I went ahead and picked it up. And I gotta say, it's a beautiful tool, very finely finished. Uh, it doesn't have the drilled and tapped holes like a norm normally you'll see in a planer gauge. Um, but this has got the thumb, the thumb screw right there. And I just wanna say that this sucker is smooth as silk, man. You can't even hear it sliding on that. It's just so smooth. And you just snug that up a little bit with your fingers and it's good to go. So I do not know the tool maker, whoever, whoever made this, I don't have a clue who it is. There's no markings on it. I would assume that this was made by a tool manufacturer, but I don't know. You would think that uh, it would be in here in these little uh, milled sections right here. So. Uh, if anybody's got any clues about this, please feel free to leave a comment and tell me. But it does look like something that would be made by, say, Brian and Sharp or, or Lufkin or Union. I don't think it's a Starrett. But any information be welcomed around here. And I, I don't know if I'm going to keep this here. I, I kind of thought about taking it to work and having another planer gauge to use there at work. So. And I'm still on the lookout for another one, just trying to wait for a, a, a very good buy on one with a wooden box, uh, because the the uh, guys down at work are they're uh, they're wanting one also. So I thought about picking one up for all of us to use down there in the machine shop. The uh, the guys in the gearbox shop used uh, Will's a couple weeks ago. Will's got one in his box, and they used it back there building a gearbox. I don't know what they used it for, but he said it was extremely handy. So I've been looking for another one to add to our toolbox at work. So uh, Tom Lipton just did a little segment on meatloaf on a new uh, planer gauge that he bought. And I was joking with him. I said, man, I'm out there trying to score one now. I know you're going to make all the stock market prices rise. So uh, hopefully you guys will leave me one and I'll be able to pick up another one, one of these for work. So again, there is the new planer gauge for the shop here. Okay, we got our relief valve for the k &T. We're gonna do a little pressure test to see if it's working correctly. And we got our gauge, and uh, this is supposed to hold between 200 to 225 PSI. We got it hooked up to a, um, a port of power jack right here. And I got Paul with me, and uh, he's gonna step in and my buddy Paul. I got my buddy Paul here. He's gonna step in and uh, explain what's going on here, okay? Uh, I've got the Oilers clamped off right here. This is just for your uh, lube system. And so we got that clamped off. So what's going on here, man? As we talked about in our video series on hydraulics, uh, relief valves are normally closed devices that are only supposed to open when it reaches the setting. So what we got here is a little rig that we rigged up to be able to pressure test it. So as you can see, the pressure rises to what the re relief valve setting is about 250 something like that but what happens is after it opens you can see the pressure bleeding off and it shouldn't do that so a relief valve is supposed to be a normally closed device until it reaches the setting and then reclose or reseat if you will after that setting is you go below the setting so you can clearly see right there that the um, poppet's leaking by. Yeah. So what would you what would you say that this is uh, this is a failed unit? Yeah, the spring the spring's in good shape because it actually reaches the spring setting that you have it set for, but it won't hold pressure, so you're leaking by internally inside the block here. So probably your spool, your uh, poppet, poppet, has got some scars or scratches in it. 
Yeah. Have you already talked about that in another series? No, no. So you think we got some, it's leaking by the poppet. Yeah, so what we'll do is uh, our next installment will be, we'll take the poppet out and show you the scars and scratches on it and uh, prove the theory that it's leaking by. All right, well, there you go. There's our bench test. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. We'll give you a shot of it. So we already kind of unscrewed the uh, adjustment screw here. All right, there's that. Spring. And we got a, <laughs> see if we can get this in there. It's a strong magnet. All right, there's our spring. And let's try to go in there one more time. There's our poppet right there. So the rule of thumb in hydraulics is if you can catch any of these scars or scratches with your thumbnail, that it's um, too much, that's a leak path basically. Under high pressure, the oil will go right by there. So what we've done here is proven that theory that once a relief valve reaches its setting, it opens, but it's supposed to reseat after it uh, re shuts again, drops below the setting we need that we have it set for. So you see the pressure bleeding all the way down, which shows you that you've got the scarring and scratching right there on your poppet. That's an interesting wear mark right in there. You see that? So uh, you can definitely, I mean, they're not real deep, but you can feel a little roughness across there with your fingernail. And that's, that's just interesting to me to see that wear pattern in there like that. So, all right, well, Paul is telling me that this is a failed unit right here. So we're going to... Let's make them. Uh, I'll let you know what we do. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find a new unit, but I don't know how, how successful I'll be there. Red and uh, 7 3 16 diameter uh, 12 threads per inch. RPM. I'm using my uh, dial indicator as my zero stop point. So I'll slow it down a little bit so I can read it to that zero a little easier.
sometimes it's a little tricky to get it started.
All right, so here's our five-stage telescopic that we're pressure testing. That's the end. We're hooked to the forklift. It's supporting it. Right now, we're uh, pressure testing it.